let's have a Q&A session about learning to code on your own. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Nastya. This is Floki, my golden retriever puppy. On my channel, I talk about tech, languages, and life. All the weird noises that you will hear are probably coming from that boy. Sorry about them in advance. I do software engineering. I converted from a linguist to a web developer fully on my own. I started learning coding on my own. And uh, since I made the pivot, I started getting a lot of questions about teaching yourself how to code and learning coding on your own and getting your first tech job. If this is something of interest to you, clearly like the video, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And let's dive into some most commonly asked questions that I get about coding and learning to code on your own. And the first question is going to be, what motivated you to learn to code on your own? Here's, I think it's important to say that I majored in linguistics and I chose Linguistic University because I did not know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I would need to speak at least a couple of foreign languages, at least English. So the reason behind choosing the major was to learn languages and to figure it out on the go. And when I was at school, I also started to look around at different areas and different things and coding got my attention because I personally needed a website and I wanted to learn more about web development, which eventually led to learning more about internet technologies, learning about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I did not feel like investing money into different bootcamps and courses. I felt like I was mostly playing around and I did not know if it, it was going to be something serious. It started as a side project and then I started taking some part-time freelance work, but I wasn't sure if Hi, Floki. And I wasn't sure if it was going to be something serious. Uh, but then I got very curious about it and I, and I wanted to keep going and I wanted to take more than just half of my day. I wanted to be something like you could say like a full-time job or a full-time occupation. Next question, what resources did you use to teach yourself? I used all the resources I could find for free online. So I didn't even pay a dollar maybe for the first year of my self-learning. I learned most of the stuff that got me my first job completely for free. And those were mostly YouTube tutorials free code camp website with lots of like that gets you practicing like from from the start also doing challenges like on hackering on lead code on exorcism reading books i like reading books i know not everyone recommends that for learning how to code but i kind of like it uh books about python javascript and also like about algorithms and that kind of stuff but i'd say the most important part was utilizing all the free resources specifically on YouTube, plus Googling everything you do not understand and you do not know and kind of following your curiosity. What are the best ways to practice coding? Well, I'm not sure which are the absolute best ways, but the best way for me was always building things. Even when I did not have enough experience and knowledge, I will go to YouTube and search for JavaScript project. You'll find a lot of tutorials with to-do list applications, with weather applications, and that simple, you know, one hour follow along tutorials. And I would do many of those and I would learn on the go. And definitely it would take me more than just one hour to complete that one tutorial and application. And uh, I know for some people it's not as comfortable, but for me, it was the most effective learning on the go. And uh, now that I'm a little bit more advanced, I, want, I just like to take some uh, mock-up or design of an application and, and to build it fully on my own without anyone's help. And also, I think another good way of practicing and specifically practicing a language that you're learning is to do some coding challenges and exercises similar to hackering, but not exactly. Though I think they also uh, do have some like set of exercises for beginners in a particular language. And uh, those exercises are nice because they kind of give you a little bit of the theory and they give you this exercise right away. So it's integrated into one small lesson and you get to practice right away. For me, it was also one of the most useful kind of tutorials to learn a new language as it would get me practicing right away instead of just reading, looking at examples. And then at some point, 
trying to to implement all of those things. How long did it take you to become proficient at coding? Like, I wouldn't call myself proficient, so yeah, but um, if we define proficient like being able to get tech job plus feeling more or less comfortable with some things, I'd say it did get easier after one year. It got a lot more easier after two three years but still one lives one learns there are a lot of things and things change what programming languages should i start with and how do you choose your languages i started not with programming languages but rather with web technologies like web builders and meanwhile i also started learning more about html and css a little bit javascript but it did not apply right away but i started with those because i needed a website so i started looking into web development technologies and uh, as i was more interested in web development it i, I also watched a lot of videos like uh development roadmaps how to start and all that kind of stuff and it was logical for me to start with this particular set of technologies as they would help me to achieve my goals what uh, language should you start with is the question that only you can answer uh, because different languages will help you do different things like if you want to build video games you'll probably need to learn c++ or whatever you're using if you want to do some data engineering that can be python maybe python can be a better choice uh even though probably there are other technologies that you will also need to learn and uh if you want to do web development i think great start is html says it's javascript even if you want to do backend it's still useful to know all those fundamentals and then move forward to any backend technology that you want like ruby plus ruby on rails or Django or whatever is popular right now. How did you stay motivated and on track when learning to code on your own? Well, first, I always had a learning strategy. So I like to watch videos like programming roadmaps where uh, people who are programmers, who are in this field already, who describe you, what are the important things to learn in the field uh, and uh, what's popular right now, what, what you could be learning and all that kind of stuff. I like to watch different videos uh, about this to kind of create my own learning plan based on my goals. And uh, I just like to find all the resources in advance and kind of have it all you know, scheduled for myself. I like to do Notion timelines for this. Uh, so I can always know what's next. That's one thing, but this is more like on a high level on a daily basis Wow, I'm just probably a very disciplined person and I like having habit trackers I like to have to-do lists. I like waking up knowing that this is what I'm gonna do today I find it easy to follow some specific routine every day. So when I just started I had a goal of completing five small lessons about uh, whatever technology I was learning at the time every day and uh, you just follow it. Another thing that helped me it was having someone who supports me. So someone, a friend of mine who was always excited about me learning how to code. He's a coder himself and he always supported me uh, and it was nice. And also having a community of like-minded people who kind of go through the same as you is also nice and this is when i found a coding coach or a coding mentor not someone who teaches you but just someone who's kind of always there uh, and we had like jazz sessions they were freestyle we just talked about technologies or some challenges uh, and it was nice having someone who is more experienced and uh, who's just always there and having the community of people because I wasn't the only one going there who kind of have the same issues with understanding some concepts and also finding a job. How has your non-traditional background helped you on your journey to becoming a software engineer? This is kind of hard to evaluate and to give an exact number or something, but I'd say first, thanks to me spending time learning languages, they can now work in an English-speaking environment, obviously, as well, I live in the US, it comes in handy. Whatever you learn, you become a better learner. So you get better strategies of learning or of uh, understanding and memorizing. So 
these are just general learning skills that are always useful and especially in programming as you will be learning all the time. Learning linguistics in particular will give you more opportunities to be close to different cultures and it will eventually make you better intercultural communication if you're kind of cultural nerd and you like to learn about different cultures, which I am. That's definitely helpful uh, when working here and better just understanding the differences between your culture and American culture or even other cultures because there are a lot of people here. And if you are curious to learn about majoring in linguistics or how I switched from linguistics to uh, web development, then I have two different videos about these topics. I'll leave the links in the description. Check them out if you're curious. What projects should I work on to apply what I've learned and improve my skills? Well, this depends on what would be fun for you to work on. I'm definitely someone who doesn't get discouraged if project is a little bit too hard for my current skill set. But if it is fun for me to work on, if you're the same, then go ahead, think what, what would be fun application for you to work on. Well, first you can build projects from YouTube, like do coding along if you're not comfortable building on your own. Second, you can go to a front-end mentor website and they have a lot of project ideas and designs for you. So you can take them and build your thing off of their design, which is nice. Sometimes they have a whole application. Sometimes it is just uh, one small section or kind of card or grid that will allow you to practice one particular skill. If you're looking for an exact project, I think of now that I'm thinking about it and looking back, one of the most useful projects that I've built was an e kind of an e-commerce with Django, uh, as it allowed me to practice a lot of things, uh, different backend operations, as well as building a um, user interface, and it was nice. So it was the most complex. Depending on what you're learning and depending on your level, you can explore any of the things that I just mentioned. How can I assess my progress and determine when I'm ready to start applying for jobs? And that was the question that I had when I was trying to switch to full-time developer. And what I did first, I analyzed my current skill set at that time. I analyzed different job postings on LinkedIn. Uh, to get some idea of what employers want and then I compared the two and if I saw kind of 60-70% fit then I realized that uh, probably I can start applying for jobs and before that I just kept learning learning and learning and I actually have a separate video about my job search strategy and getting my first job in tech if you're curious about it the link will be here and in the description definitely check this out and also what helped me to assess my readiness for applying for jobs was uh, when i built a fully working application it was a react app single page application nothing fancy uh, no backend at all, just working with a third party API and then I deployed it. Um, that was for an internship. The application that I've done, it was a huge one and it was like internship uh, project just for applying. When I built this application, I got more confident in myself and uh, especially in my uh, debugging and uh, solving challenges ability. And so having that application up and running was also something that helped me on multiple interviews. <laughs> Flock is so sweet, he's sleeping here. And last question for today. What advice do you have for others who are considering learning to code on their own? Keep pushing. This is something that my coding coach told us all. Just keep pushing. Some things are hard to understand, but you will get them eventually. You'll be there, you'll understand it, you'll be able to build that thing. Just keep pushing, keep doing, keep going. Take a break when you need it, but then get back at it. Hopefully, guys, you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you didn't dislike this video, it is also fine. Uh, write in the comments any thoughts that you have about the things that I mentioned. And if you have anything to add, definitely go to the comment section. Hopefully, I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.